Welcome back to our OSS fund update. Uh, we, we're here speaking with Matthew today. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Also known, as you can tell if you're on the video, as Zoom Tech. Um, so to, today, uh, we're just going to talk now about and break down the React Native permissions uh, part of our OSS fund. And I just wanted to get a little bit more of your background first, Matthew. Um, why did you create uh, not only this library, but all of the different React Native um, uh, libraries that we have out there in your GitHub repository? Um, I started working with React Native like maybe six years ago now. So it, yeah, it's been quite a while. Um, and at start, it was very rough with a lot of updates and breaking change all the time. So. Uh, the libraries were at last, uh, at least like uh, not well maintained, <laughs> <laughs> of course, because it was really hard for maintainer to keep track uh, on that. And uh, yeah, a lot of people gave up actually. Uh, so uh, we have this application, uh, which is which was like a new, fresh application. Uh, so it was okay. It, um, it was okay to break it uh, every week because uh, it was an experiment yeah. with our clients. Uh, so the context was good, uh, but we missed a lot of libraries. So I start creating, at first, it, I think it was a React Native Languages, uh, which was a polyphy for navigator languages, uh, because at this time we had the uh, we had a navigator of your location directly in React Native, like in the browser. No, it's not the case anymore. Uh, so I had uh, I created a pull request for React Native to implement like navigator languages, and they tell me they told me like, okay, it's great, but maybe it should be a separated library. So I did that. Uh, <laughs> at first, it was just for the language of a, of a device. And after it will, it became like a, for, uh, I don't know, temperature units, uh, country, uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, all you need to uh, properly lo uh, localize your application. So I switched the name because the name was not, uh, was not good anymore because it was React Native Languages. No, it's React Native Localized because it covers a lot more. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, and after that, uh, we had issues with React Native Permission, which was an existing library, but not maintained because the maintainer uh, didn't work with React Native anymore this time. So I reach him and say, uh, I already take care of one library, so maybe I could help with this one too. At, at first, I helped like uh, an external maintainer, and uh, after a bit of time, uh, everyone said, like, okay, uh, you should take care of it because uh, your hand doesn't have time anymore. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I get it back. Um, and after that, uh, I joined uh, something like uh, something called like, uh, React Native uh, Community, uh, which was like an official community and uh, organization on GitHub. Uh, with a lot of people uh, from uh, Meta, uh, Facebook at this time. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, our task was uh, to externalize some part of React Native. Like React Native became bigger and bigger uh, <laughs> at this time with a lot of features directly in the framework. And at this time, it was too complex for them to maintain this. So they say to the community, like, maybe we should create separated package. Uh, that's why today we have React Native Web View, React Native Async Storage. Uh, before it was directly in React Native. No, it's not anymore. Uh, this community was, uh, has been created for that task. So I joined, uh, I joined it. And uh, at, uh, at this time, uh, React Native Localize and React Native Permission joined a uh, React Native community. So is, uh, is the actual like main repository hosted on React Native uh, community now, and yours is just a fork, or vice versa? No, actually, um, it was it was the main uh, in React Native community, but React Native community doesn't exist anymore. Uh, at some time, they, uh, 
they choose to break it, uh, to break it, uh, okay, close it. Uh, so it gets back on my uh, on my account, um, and after that, I created a React Native Boot Splash because uh, I had a lot of issue with React Native Splash Screen. So same, same all. <laughs> Does not maintain. It had a lot of issues, and I get sometimes it's really hard to maintain React Native library. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so what drives you towards that? If like you could write all of this just for your own applications and and keep it maintained, what what pushes you to like want to be part of that OSS open source community and and put these libraries out there? Um. It's a lot of things, actually. Uh, I really enjoy when I see that uh, something great is actually uh, created using my library. Uh, like I can, I could use um, a, a small, um, a small app called JetX to decompile uh, Android application. So sometimes when I see like a great splash screen with uh, an animation, uh, I take the APK and just check if they use it and if they use it like it's it's a satisfaction for me that's uh, really cool yeah it's it's like a win-win they're getting all of the like the productivity and you're getting that awesome feeling back that you're you're helping other people out that's really awesome yeah and it's complex subject actually so it, it's great uh because i i like working on art stuff like permission is really a really complex subject, and uh, it's great to understand how it works. Yeah, you know. for sure. So your your original background it was more in design, correct? If I have that. Yeah, right? uh, I uh, I start as a designer. Uh, I work as a designer for two or three years, and after that, uh, <laughs> I saw that it was complex for me to ship design and. Uh, just checked every time that they were, uh, they were respected. Uh, they were well implemented. So <laughs> I started I start to do some front end just to implement my design. Yeah. And after that, I saw the salary and I say, okay, maybe I should drop design <laughs> by now. <laughs> I don't know why we underpay our designers. Yeah, like they're they're the most creative people there are. Like open AI can write this stuff for us now, right? <laughs> It's so difficult. Um, so tell me more about what it's like actually maintaining um, at this point, like large OSS projects. You have you have many issues coming in. Um, how are you handling kind of dealing with you have a, a lot of different repos? How are you dealing with um, kind of organizing those and getting people to to commit back to those and help you out? Um, I use a GitHub form, actually. Uh, no, in GitHub we have uh, GitHub forms, which are uh, YAML uh, templates. Uh, you can set some uh, some field as required, etc. So it's really great uh, to groom actually the issue uh, and the, the feature request. Uh, before that, it was really hard. I had this uh, like of uh, markdown commands uh, as an issue template, but a lot of people just don't care. Just take the whole template and delete it and <laughs> say, oh, my app doesn't work. You have to do something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OK, but no, no, it's required. So it's a lot easier to groom uh, issue on uh, template. Uh, actually, I use the same for all my repository uh, with the same label. Uh, it's the same flow. And it's, uh, it's I find great. It's really easy to use. Um, so um, I don't hesitate to to close issue. Uh, sometimes there's a there's issue with duplicates, uh, feature requests with duplicates, and I already explained why I I will not uh, implement this feature, for example. Uh, so I send a link to the previous issue, put a label on it, just duplicate and close it immediately. Uh, this kind of stuff you. Um, you have to, I think, at some point on big subject on the on big subject on big library like that, uh, to close uh, pull request, uh, to close issue. Exp always explain why, but yeah. uh, you can't you can't add like all the features. 
Uh, of course, it's free, uh, it's open source. Everyone uh, wants to have a lot of features. They will say, hey, we have this very specific use case. Uh, maybe it should fit in the library. And at some point, you have to say, hey, maybe do that in your code. You can do, you can do an abstraction of our library. It's OK. Uh, but I don't think we have enough people wanting that to put that in the library, to maintain that to check uh, it, if it's not uh, broken or yeah. on the new uh, Android version of iOS version. Um, so yeah, at some point you have to just uh, maybe be a bit strict about that. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's often difficult to like, first of all, get your project up and going and then maintaining it is like a whole, a whole nother step that we have to take. And that's kind of why Apparate wanted to start this OSS fund. Um, I'm positive you have a, a job, a day job on top of maintaining these. Yeah. How do you find that balance? And like, is there a way that others can help you out even further? Um, actually, I'm also using my libraries and my current job. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not a full-time uh, React Native developer anymore. Uh, I mostly do front end uh, currently, so we've React to Dom, and um, I use it like for maybe a pet project uh, in my company. So it's a, a really light usage, uh, but uh, I think it's okay. Uh, it allows me to keep track uh, on uh, like like I say, a new Android version, new iOS version, new React Native version. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I keep a track on, uh, with that, but I don't think it's enough anymore uh, <laughs> because it's a, it's a really moving uh, environment and uh, not doing it full time make it really hard to do that uh, like at the same time uh, next to my job. Yeah, I, that's understandable. Um, what do you think with the, the OSS fund that um, Apparite was able to help you out with? Are, are you able to utilize that money already, or is there plans in the future for anything to, to kind of help out that support? Yeah, actually, I plan, I plan to use it in the future uh, because we have like this huge update uh, coming to React Native, which is the new architecture. Uh, it's a different way to write model, and I will have to do compat for that. Okay. Uh, ship new major version uh, of my libraries, and I will really need to find some time to do that. Yeah. And uh, actually, the fund will help me to like maybe uh, lock a bit of my time because uh, I, like I, uh, I said just in an issue, I, I explained like the status of the library for now. Uh, I'm trying to buy a flat right now. And if I have a bit of time to work, I, I, will, uh, I, will, use, uh, I will use it to do freelance work, awesome. paid, paid work. So oh. having, having funds is great. Like just to say, using my freelance rates I can lock maybe X uh, 10, uh, 10 days, I don't know, uh, just uh, to work on open source instead. That's awesome. That's really good. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that too. There's, there's often like a, a hard way to find it. It's usually like paying for servers or paying someone else. And I'm, I'm glad you're able to use that time yourself and like really dive back into the project. So that, that makes me feel really excited. And I'm sure uh, the rest of AppRite is excited as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for uh, coming on and breaking down um, what OSS Fund is and uh, kind of how you're using it in React Native permissions. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, Matthew. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Take care. Have a good one. Have a good day.